Well, welcome to Marking the End Times. I'm Mark Hitchcock. I want to thank you, as always, so much for taking time to uh, join me for this week's video. On uh, today's program, I want to talk about something that I think is on everyone's mind. It has been on everyone's mind for the last several days. And that's about this assassination attempt on President Trump's life. And I want to talk specifically about the hand of God. I believe the hand of God was seen in, in preser preserving uh, President Trump's life in this assassination attempt on, on Saturday. And I want to remind us all of what God's word says about his sovereign control over nations and over leaders. The Bible says that God raises up rulers and God deposes them. It says they're like water, uh, channels of water in, in God's hand. Daniel 2.21 says that God changes times and seasons. He deposes kings and he raises up others. Daniel 4.17 says, The Most High is sovereign over all the kingdoms on earth and gives them to anyone that he wishes. So God's in control of who's leading nations and, and who is deposed. God, God sovereignly controls nations and rulers. And I believe we saw clear evidence of the hand of God visibly at work uh, last Saturday. And I, I want to look together in a few moments at an incredible passage of Scripture that reveals the hand of God over a ruler in the land of Israel. I want to talk about that. It's a fascinating passage. I know you're going to want to, uh, going to, want to hear this. It, it's great stuff. Before we, we go to that, I want to mention that in a little bit, we'll go to the subscriber-only section. We're going to answer some questions that have been sent in uh, by our subscribers. Um, a couple of questions we're going to answer are related to Hebrews 9.27 that says it's appointed to men to die once, but after that comes judgment. And this first question is, what about Lazarus who died and Jesus raised him from the dead? Did he die again? Does anything in the Bible touch on this? And another question, it's appointed to man to die only once. Then must, why we, we must ask why some people die, go to heaven and come back to tell of their experience. Is this what the Bible calls fainting? Um, another question is, the Bible says we will not marry in heaven or have children but it also says that God will wipe away every tear and there'll be no more pain or crying or sorrow. That being the case, will we know our wives or children we had here on earth? It would certainly be painful for me not to remember my wife or children when we're in heaven. And then one final question. I have a, a neighbor who's nice enough, uh, but appears to be an atheist. It seems She seems to poo-poo the existence of God. I'd like to minister to her, but am at a total loss as to the best way to go about it. I prayed for the Holy Spirit to guide me and give me the proper time and words, but so far no, no leading has come about. What should I do? I'm sure that's a question that many of you have asked as well, just how to deal with maybe family members or friends who claim to be atheists. So we'll talk about that uh, here in just a few moments. Uh, but th this assassination attempt against President Trump has sent shockwaves throughout our nation and, and through the world. There's uh, been a lot of foreign leaders who've responded to this. Um, on Sunday, Russian Foreign Ministry spokesperson Maria uh, Zakharova said in a, a social media post that U.S. lawmakers should use the money being spent to supply Ukraine with weapons to finance the American police and other services, which should ensure law and order within the United States. So a lot of people around the world are responding with kind of a lot of sarcasm like this and kind of using this to, to kind of uh, dig at, at America. This is one that I, astounded me. It's, it's just the height of hypocrisy. A senior leader of Hamas told CBS News on Monday that the group condemns any violence. I mean, this is from the group that unleashed hellish violence on the Jewish people on October 7th. I mean, talk about the height of, of hypocrisy. So a lot of politicians and pundits are expressing their thoughts about what happened. And the backstory, of course, about this, uh, this would-be assassin is, is still being filled in. But I don't want to lose sight in all of this of the hand of God. I believe this is one of the most astounding evidences of God's providence that I've ever seen. And I think it's there for the whole world to see. And many uh, well-known uh, periodicals, newspapers, uh, television programs are talking about Christians who are saying that in this they see the hand of God. And to me, it's, it's unmistakable. Um, just like many of you, I've seen the replays of this assassination attempt many times. In fact, my wife and I watched the events unfold last Saturday evening live on television. I was sitting in uh, 
my uh, leather chair in my office, kind of uh, one eye on the television, kind of looking at my sermon for Sunday, just kind of thinking that over. And we saw these events begin to unfold. And I can assure you, I'll never forget where I was the day when that happened. When I, when I first saw what was taking place, I thought that, that President Trump uh, had been shot and he went down quickly. And, um, you know, I, I began to, to pray. And, and when I saw him stand up, had a great sense of, of relief and gratitude and begin to see the chaos and just the things that unfolded there. But my wife uh, was sitting in, in the uh, next room and I went in there and we sat down there together and just watched what was happening. And I told her right at, at that time, I said, the, the first thing that's come to my mind about this is Second Kings chapter 22, uh, verses 34 and following. Because whenever we, we saw this take place, uh, President Trump was standing there at this podium and generally, he doesn't have PowerPoint presentations. I watch several of his rallies, and he usually doesn't have that. But in the, the presentations where he does have that, usually it's near the end. But in this particular case, he just kind of made the offhand remark, well, let's go ahead and show this, this diagram now. And it was something about having to do with immigration. And so because of that, he, he's turning his head and you know, pointing and kind of pointing at this this, this uh picture that's on the screen next to him. So he, he's moving his head, which he normally wouldn't be doing. It'd just be a stationary target. And many have pointed out that his head, I mean, right as this bullet's whizzing by, his head turns. If he turned his head a little bit more or a little bit less, the bullet would have struck him and done catastrophic damage, probably would have, would have killed him. So it's just, you know, people have said this is something that comes down basically just uh, to millimeters. And as I, I saw that and then thought about all of this, it was unfolding. This passage came to mind. It's First Kings chapter 22. It's a fascinating passage. I would encourage you to read it. Uh, the, the, the king of Israel, the wicked king of Israel, Ahab, is going out to battle against the Arameans, uh, people who lived in, in Syria back in that day. He's going to battle with the king also of, uh, of Judah, who's named Jehoshaphat. They're going into battle together. And God has told Ahab through prophets, through several prophets, that he's going to die in battle. He's going to die the next day. Well, Ahab goes and disguises himself so they won't know that he's the king. And the king of Aram actually goes after Jehoshaphat, thinking he's Ahab, to try to kill him and realizes it's, he's, not, uh, he, he's not Ahab. Ahab probably put on the, the, uh, the garb of a, of a private or a sergeant rather than the garb of a king. So he thinks he's fooling God through this disguise. But you read this passage, and again, there's a lot here that's fascinating. But in chapter 22 of 1 Kings, verse 34, it says that the battle's, the battle's going on. And it says, a certain man, it says, now a man, this is an anonymous archer. He drew his bow at random. And so you have this, this Aramean archer, this anonymous Aramean archer, and it seems like here he's just got one bow or one, not one arrow left in his quiver. And so he just takes this arrow out. And notice it says here, he just shot it at random. So he's not really aiming at anything. He just fires this arrow at random. And it struck the king of Israel in the joint of his armor. It's only one place you could hit him with his armor on, just a tiny joint between the armor. And the arrow happens to hit right in that area. Now, notice how it says here, he drew his bow at random and struck the king in the joint of his armor. It just, just happened to strike him there. Of course, he, he goes on, he's taken off, he dies. There's actually several prophecies fulfilled. It talks about how uh, that one of the prophecies was his blood would fill the chariot and would be washed out near the place of where he killed a, a man named Naboth. So several prophecies were fulfilled uh, when this took place. So again, you have an anonymous archer, an unnamed man, one last arrow in his quiver, pulls it out, puts it in his bow, and just simply let it go. He just shot it as far as he could, had no idea where it was going, but God did. God's hand was guiding that arrow to the small spot that he intended for it. And you could call this uh, the world's first guided missile. I mean, this was not a coincidence. It was a providence. And while God's providence was taking the life of King Ahab by this guided missile, I believe God's hand was preserving and saving the life of President Trump by also guiding that bullet. I mean, think of the hand of God all over these events of, of last Saturday. 
Again, he has a PowerPoint presentation, rarely does that. When he does, it's usually later in the speech. His head is moving and turning. He turned at just the exact moment. I believe God's uh, fingerprints are unmistakable on this. In fact, on X, not long after this, President Trump himself said, it was God alone who prevented the unthinkable from happening. We will, we will, we will fear not, but instead remain resilient in our faith and defiance in the face of wickedness. Um, and when in an interview with the New York Post on Sunday, President Trump said this, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be dead. By luck or by God? Now, it's by God. <laughs> Many people are saying it's by God. I'm still here. I heard one of President Trump's sons say at the Republican National Convention that this was the hand of God. So God is the, the God of projectiles, and he's the God of prophecy. God is the God of the mountains, but he's also the God of the millimeters. And I believe that God used this event and has already used this event in our nation to cause many people to begin to think about the hand of God I and mean, that they saw this themselves live. But I believe President Trump has been changed. It, it appeared to me um, when I saw him Monday night at the Republican National Convention that his entire demeanor seemed different to me. Now, time will tell uh, the extent of this event's impact on him but I'm continuing to pray that God will use this brush with death to save him and change him and use him as a mighty instrument for God's glory and for the good of our country. Now, this could be a pivotal turning point for our country as well if people can respond with repentance and humility. So it's good for us, too, to remember at this time that the same God controls your life and my life. I'm the God that controls the nations and controls rulers and kings and kingdoms controls your life and my life. And his gracious guiding hand is upon your life if you know him. I like to define the providence of God as the hand of God inside the glove of human events. You see a glove that's moving, but inside that glove, there's a hand that's moving the glove. And the providence of God is that, that invisible hand that's inside the glove of human events, uh, ruling and overruling, God is orchestrating and ordering and overseeing the events of life. And he's doing that in your life and in my life. And we need to, to be looking for the kind and gracious providences of life in, in our lives every day as God leads us and guide us, guides us. We, continue, we need to continue to pray for our country. In the aftermath of this assassination attempt, Axios had a headline that said this, 80% of voters say the U.S. is spiraling out of control. Another headline says, 80% of those polled say America is sliding into chaos. So let's pray that this event will have the opposite effect and that God can use it to stir a wave of revival and repentance in our nation. And may God start with each one of us and, and use this in our lives. As we saw his hand clearly on display, we see his hand clearly on display in our lives, that we'll surrender our lives in humility and trust him and live lives of gratitude and humility and thankfulness before him. Well, we're going to go to our subscriber-only section now, answer those questions that I mentioned earlier. And if you're not a subscriber and you'd like to be, uh, you can go to endtimes.com and sign up there for just $7 a month. And I think it will be uh, a great investment into your life spiritually uh, to be a part of, of endtimes.com. So we'll go now to the uh, subscriber-only section, and we'll answer these questions that have been sent in.